Hi, I'm Ke Min. Hi, uh, my name is Kai. In today's episode, we have Kai here, who is a BPTC graduate, to discuss on the topic of what exactly was his decision on choosing BPTC. So, as an introduction, could you tell us why did you want to study law in the first place? Uh, so, for starters, I'm not your traditional law student. Mm, I, I wouldn't say my parents forced me or anything, uh -huh. but I just see it as a very personal profession. Uh, there are many different areas you can actually venture into, so it's not really like a single track uh, career. Like, attracted to the potential uh -huh. and also the possible path that you take uh, coming from a single degree. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that was pretty much the beginning for me. So like, how do you go about reading law then? I took law as a subject when I was doing my Australian matriculation. Oh, you did so nice. we did, uh, I did the Australian legal studies. I did terribly at it. So I was wondering like, if I should really go into law. Uh -huh. But I decided to pursue it anyway. Ended up in the KDU. Um, it was a training program with Oxford University. Uh -huh. So it's an express course. So it's really fast. Like, I think two, two and a half years you completed over degree. Really. So I did a, a year and a half here. I did my final year in Oxford. Uh, yeah, so that was pretty much my undergraduate. Uh -huh. Then I came back for a while, went back to London for my bar. Oh. Yeah, so. Oh, so when you graduated, you came back, but you didn't stay to do the CLP, but instead you went back to do the bar. La. I think for a lot of students, uh, even for myself, uh -huh. when you ask me whether which course would I go for, I think the first thing you really have to ask yourself is whether your parents can afford it. Uh -huh. So I just went with what my parents wanted me to do. Uh -huh. And they thought that there's always this uh, perception that EBTC is better. Uh -huh. and it was only recently I realized, like past two years, two years, I think it's both courses are equally difficult. Uh -huh. You develop different skills, you have different advantages in both courses. But I just went with the EBTC because my parents wanted me to go. They saved uh -huh. up for me to go. So my parents say no. So I applied, got into EPP London. Yeah, so I spent a year there. Oh, and speaking of about this PPT itself, then, like, how was the cost structured like then? The duration. I think, it, I think it's slightly changed already. Yeah. Uh, I just had a conversation with a friend recently who's applying. Mm -hmm. Slightly different now, but when, but during my time, they, it's not so different than what you get. You have different weeks, different weeks you tackle different uh, subjects, different topics specifically. Uh, but it's a lot more fast paced. You, you have to finish up everything in one, one day, one day, one day. Uh -huh. As opposed to you need to start skip classes, you cannot skip classes. <laughs> Skipping a class is automatically, uh, automatically a death sentence for you. Um, so yeah, the structures, I guess, uh, there, there's like long lectures. Uh -huh. long lectures. You have to attend every single one of them. Uh -huh. attend automatically disqualified at the time when I was there. They're very restrict. Uh, unless you have a valid reason. So I think they have like similarly they have like, exams right in the middle of the semester mm -hmm. and then you have to uh, you can opt for different courses also. Uh, and then you have the what they call the PSB the it's similar to the LPQB, but uh -huh. they are professional qualified the course. There is called the Bar Standards Course. Oh. They would then govern several papers but at my time it was legal I'm uh, sorry criminal, civil and ethics. Uh, now I think they they already minim they already minimized the coverage right uh, so, uh, the control over the subjects. So it's like that. So pretty much your uni will set internal exams for you. Then you also have to take a VSB centralized exam. Not so different. The only different thing from uh, undergraduate year, uh, undergraduate studies and bar is the fact that BBTC, like I said, is very practical, uh -huh. technically practical, that's what I want to call it, super technical, but you have to practice it in a very technical sense. Unlike the CLP, I've heard the CLP is literally memorizing, memorizing, and then regurgitating everything. Mm -hmm. That's a skill of its own. So, yeah, pretty much the structure, like I said, it's, it's not so different from uni, but it's a lot more fast paced, it's a lot more serious, I think. Oh, then going on from what you said, like it's practical but it's very technical, right? Like, what exactly, what exactly do you learn about it? So, I think one thing I developed from that experience is eye for detail. Eye for detail. Although, yes, you are in the bar, you're not expecting, you're not in practice, you're not expecting uh -huh. to take like, into consideration all these small details and advocacy. 
but what I learned very quickly was from my mistakes. Uh -huh. um, feedback from lecturers um, is that you really have to pay attention to what's happening in the room. This is for advocacy. Uh -huh. um, we were always, uh, ex we were actually, uh, our exams usually, they will hire like a professional actor, actress, or um, actress witness, uh -huh. and you force them to examine them. Oh. And then they'll be the judge, the judge, the lecturer, mm -hmm. or someone else from another institution. So, yeah, it usually is like that. And then uh, you have to learn how to read the room. That's a skill that I think a lot of lawyers do struggle. I myself sometimes do that. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's the biggest thing I've picked up on from our attention to detail and precision. Like you have to identify issues properly, like on the score. So, critical thinking, essentially, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then when you speak of like, you have to act in the courtroom and you have examinations, how exactly is, are you assessed in BBTC? BBTC, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you have written, written uh, exams. Uh -huh. um, you have also practical exams. So this, this is what I just told you. You go into a room, you will have to face a professional actor as your witness, and then a judge who is your lecturer or someone else. So usually they will judge you in a sense of how well are you able to extract control your witness, uh -huh. extract information from your witness, sorry. How well are you able to submit your case? Whether you are, you, are, you have successfully submitted your case, your client's case. Uh -huh. There's another aspect to it, it's called conferencing. Basically, you meet with an actor who is uh, trying to, basically it's like you're meeting your client for the first time, and what questions are you going to ask to extract information? Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So in that sense, that's why I say it's technically practical. Very technical concepts, but very practical application. So that's usually how it assess advocacy wise. Written stuff is usually like what you, what you and I would hold up, you know, just write your uh -huh. answers down. But the biggest challenge for that is similarly in undergraduate LLB, uh, you have to write a lot mm. in a very short period of time. And usually I get like cramps in my hands. It's very normal for us. Yeah. And I don't see any reason why they should restrict the time, but that's just how it is. All of us are going through that. So, written and practical oral exams are basically. Oh. Yeah. Back to UK to do the bar, it was full time. Huh? It was a full time program. Full time then? How did a typical day sound like then? Uh, okay, very fast paced. Because my classes are usually around 9 or even I think 8 30 sometimes. Which is ridiculous because you have to wake up during the rush hours. I take the tube to class, right? Uh -huh. And then, uh, so I wake up around like 7 30. Shower, no time for breakfast, run out, get into the tube, and just run to uni, you need also some game class, finish class, come out, um, usually I will get to lunch, back into the library, finish off around, that will be around like 1 2 pm. Uh -huh. Go back to the library and then study, 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 study. Yeah. Oh. And I think um, once in a while I'll go out with my friends, maybe like dinner or drinks, but most of the time I spend reading books. My, I mean, in the library. Uh -huh. uh, if I'm not in the library, I'll probably be in some cafe with my laptop, being my phone. Because, like I say, it's very fast paced. Uh, they're not going to wait for you. If you lack a few things, right? A few things, like a few subjects, the topics, it's already, you're already in trouble. Been there, done that. So <laughs> my lesson, to, my lesson, my, the lesson that I learned is that you have to be on top of everything. And, yeah, that was pretty much it. I'll go home around 8, 9, most of the time. And dinner, then go to bed, prepare again next day. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty hectic, but of course, nothing compared to practice. Mm -hmm. practice is completely different. So, yeah, that was pretty much how it looks like. Uh, oh. Great weekday, DPTC. Then, what about the on the examination itself? How how is it structured? Like? Oh, the examination is crazy as well. Uh, if I remember clearly, my time they put it one week. One week. One week. Uh, depending on the complexity of the subject itself. Struggle uh, accordingly. But uh, if I remember clearly, it's Monday to Thursday. And then next week, sometimes you have like one or two exams. You finish off as much as possible at one go. Oh. So that's how, how hectic it is. Uh, you can prepare everything. Uh, my biggest struggle with exams is because I have to prepare so much for every subject, right? Sometimes uh -huh. I'll go. Obviously, our instinct is to prepare for the first one. Mm. And you neglect the second and third. Mm -hmm. So that's the crazy, craziest part. Of they take more time to rest, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But then in hindsight, like usually people do pass their BPTC, right? It's like... Oh, good oh. question. Because I... I'm not gonna... I'm not even ashamed to tell you this. I failed six papers in my first year. Um, how I'm here, I'm 
just do this to get married. I was going through a lot of clips on YouTube, a lot of that kind of stuff. Obviously, I have a lot of friends who actually went through my book, and my deep room. I had a lot of margin out there, because I like, was so hard to do that. Quite devastating. And then you're going to retake in the shop here. Like, uh -huh. so, but I think the passing rate for BTC is much higher compared to COP. Uh -huh. Reasons that I I might even know, but generally it's okay. You can handle it actually. Oh, so so when you said you like filled those certain papers, you only had to retake them, like you didn't have to retake the entire. Uh, depending, I think it depends. If you fail, if you fail certain a few papers, uh, regardless of how many papers, you can actually retake them a second time. But if you fail a second time, then you're gone. You have retake all course again. Oh, yeah. So it happens. Um, I failed. Six papers, marginal papers. So I had to retake them second time, and I think I feel one more paper, marginal by one. Uh -huh. So usually in those circumstances, they give you what they call an exceptional receipt, third receipt. So I can pass that up finally, so it's okay. Oh, then did you have to pay to. Yeah, it's very expensive. Um, for me, I can't remember how much we paid for them. I think it's 300 pounds. <laughs> yeah, and at, at the time when I failed, I even had to pay to extend my visa, and that, that one's like 1,000 more pounds. Shit. Just for a few papers, uh -huh. ridiculous. I did not take everything on go. I actually applied for an exemption, so I can take it back here from Asia. So I only did like a oral paper instead. So if you imagine like paying like a few thousand, 1,000 more pounds just to take one paper. <laughs> oh shit! Then, yeah. Like, could you like give us a rough estimate of total cost then when it, when it comes like this? You're talking about failing uh, or Like you had to do a PTC, ma. Then yeah. you initially with PTC, then you had to retake and another paper retake, right? So how much rough estimate? How much was it all? PTC is uh, you know the different providers throughout the country, UK, right? Uh -huh. The one that I went to was my last choice. Last choice. And they were the only one that, that offered me. You know why it's my last choice? This is the most expensive. It was ninety thousand pounds. Oh shh. I applied for I applied for Manchester my first choice. That was like thirteen thousand, which is actually okay, you know. But it's only London offered. So when I got it I was quite upset. <laughs> Oh. How did from 13,000 jump until 90? I think it's a uh, cost of living. Uh -huh. Like London or obviously it's more expensive. Uh -huh. And then when you go out, it gets cheaper. Uh -huh. And that's how it is. Okay. So, uh, 19,000 pounds. And then I think I have to pay for uh, 6 papers, six, I think another 3,000 pounds for all the 6 papers. And then another 1,005, I think, for uh, the this is not even like including uh, accommodation. So I think I s my parents spent a lot of money on easily. Just for the cost. Yeah, I was, I was just as backward as well. It's so under a lot of stress as well. So I like, can you imagine failing this and then 100 grand just goes down the drain? Well, okay, la, like then, like, what can you say were the key takeaways, lessons from all this entire experience? Down about failure. I filled six papers. I got back up. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my friends, my juniors, like, pay one paper, worry about it. If you, it's only a complete fail, failure if you just you know cry about it and not do anything about it. So each time, obviously, I was upset. Um, but I try to optimize my process. Like, when I do revision, I, find, I try to find out what were the things that I did wrong. Uh, attack on that. And then I think it, it, it worked out, you know. And obviously, you have to be very mentally strong. So, mm. Fun fact when I went for my uh, the BBTC, they actually made a sign a waiver. Really? I don't oh. know if they still do that. You have, the waiver says, along, says something along the line. You have to be mentally strong. Or mentally. I don't know what's that term. <laughs> yeah. uh, mentally fit. Uh, uh -huh. And then physically fit also. Because this is a very intellectually, challenge, intellectually challenging course. Uh -huh. So. Uh, by signing this, you, you are uh, confirming that you are fit, uh -huh. you're sane, uh, basically, you can take a course. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if it's still the same, I think they will still do that. Uh, mm. It's a very demanding course. Um, compared to, I think CLP is a little demanding, it's just that it's from a very different angle, right? Yeah. I think all in all, the BBTC taught me a lot about perseverance. Mm -hmm. I'm sure going through something like that, 
you have to pick up something. You have to know that you, know, you went through that process. You have to learn the fact that your know, failures are there. It's all right, like to fail. Um, and then uh, I think another thing I pick up on is um, because you live overseas, right? Uh. To me, it feels like a job. A job. DBTC is not so much about studying. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm actually I'm not here, and I have to deal with. Like, you know, there's legal aid also, you have to deal with that. Mm. So, you are subjected to a very professional standard uh, ever since then. And so, professionalism is one thing as well. Attention to detail, perseverance, three biggest things that I would take away from that. And, uh, yeah.